Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, and we're so glad you could join us again today. We'll be here every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. We have some special shows lined up for you this month right after the new year because we wanted to kick it off right. We know many of you guys have New Year's resolutions, so much of our shows this January are going to be around those New Year's resolutions. So, as always, you can send us some suggestions, and we'll see how those line up with the plans and feel free to add some guests on you can find us at tampahometalk.com we're also on facebook and twitter and around the web at tampa home talk today in studio we have two lovely guests and another guest joining us by phone honored to have all three of these ladies here and the topic for this week's show is about organizing professional organizing making your everyday life better because that's some of the things that's part of our mission here at tampa home talk and we're going to tell you how to keep Keep things so simplistic and find a system that will just move you right on through that process and start that new year off right. So first, I would like to welcome our first time guest here, Sarah Doring. Oh, thank you for having me. Simplicity Organized Solutions? Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank um, you. She was actually introduced to us by Kelly Ogboke. She's been in studio before. Welcome back, Kelly. Thank you. Professional Design... Professional Design Management? <laughs> yes. Yes. Kelly Og- Ogboke. Yes. There you go. I know. I thought I had it right. <laughs> so Kelly does a little bit more intricate. She does organizing, but it's really like the organizing that most people can't see. <laughs> so you do the organizing like, what is this weird space that I'm looking at? I can't, I don't really know what to do with this. She can kind of rearrange all of that in her head and she'll sketch it out and put together <laughs> a whole plan on how to make that space amazing. It's, it's hard to describe, but we're going to post her website and some pictures on tampahometalk.com and also on our Facebook page. We also have joining us by phone author of Getting Organized, The Clear and Simple Way, Miss Marla D. Marla? Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. I am thrilled. And I've had a time. had a chance to um, listen to your book as I digest most of my books because I'm always in the car. And your system is pretty amazing with um, just the whole organizational system. And it'll be interesting how that ties into what Sarah does and maybe even some of what Kelly does. So I'll have them chime in when they have some thoughts to add to what you're going to talk about. But um, I know you had some thoughts and some directions on where you wanted to start the show today. And and you're, I've read through your systems and they're they're pretty amazing. They seem pretty easy to follow and I think even when you get it and it's easy for some people it's just doing it (laughs) and that's where Sarah may come into play so true (laughs) so someone has a new year's resolution right and one of those new year's resolution is to just get organized or get rid of stuff or purge or donate or just make it better where do they start that's that's my new year's resolution where do I start okay I love that question So here is my advice based on doing this for 15 years with people. I've been in hundreds of homes and offices, and I've seen a lot of stuff, okay? And come January, that energy hits. So my suggestion is consciously choose one small, medium, and large project for each season. So we are now in the winter season. So a small project might be the top of your dresser, your purse, the passenger seat of the car. A medium-sized project might be the top of the kitchen counter if it's covered. And a large project might be your clothes closet or your bedroom. But by saying these are the things that I'm going to do this season, it relieves stress automatically because what I found is people are so focused on all the clutter and all the stuff and constantly telling themselves that they need to get organized. And as professional organizers, that's one of the gifts we bring in. So your organizer there can help by going in and meeting with the person and saying, but where do you want to 
start. I think it's so funny that you choose the purse as a small project where, you know, I know people like my mother were that the size of her purse. It would not be a small project. (laughs) The purse is the funniest story in the world. They say if you look inside a woman's purse, you'll find out more about her life than you want to know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So let's talk about the purse. We'll use that for an example. Okay. Or, you know, I don't know, something else we can relate to for guys. What would that be, Chris? Because you don't carry a purse, right? <laughs> uh, I would say probably... So it wouldn't be your wallet. It's got to be a little bigger. The back seat of my car. Okay, so the back seat of <laughs> his car and someone's purse. Like, where do we start? Like, it's just... I just got to fix those it. Are the, those are the dumping grounds, right? So yes. So I'm going to go ahead and just introduce three simple steps here. So the clear and simple way to clear the clutter and get organized is what I like to teach people. And it starts out with a one, two, three that I call see it, map it, do it. And when people think about getting in there and organizing that purse or the back seat of the car, they dive into doing it, right? They're just like they haul out all the stuff and they start to sort it. But my suggestion is do two simple steps first that I call see it and map it. So see it is about taking a look where you're at, map it, and make a plan for what you want do it, take the steps to get there. And what I mean by that is if you just literally take two to five minutes and you write what's working, what's not, and what do I really want, it makes a big difference before you go in there and you start to do the organizing or the clutter clearing. And here's one of my favorite stories for uh, the car. It was actually the trunk of the car. So I had a little old lady once. She's in her 80s. And her project that she wanted to start with was the trunk of her car. So when we went through the see it and map it step and talked about what's working and what's not, what was her vision for what she really wanted. Her vision was she wanted to be able to open up the trunk of her car, reach inside, grab her fishing pole, and go fishing. <laughs> but right now she couldn't find her fishing pole when she opened the trunk of her car. So How what big was that trunk? <laughs> it's true. It was just covered, but she tackled it. What those two steps do if you do them first is they just give you clarity on what's going on and what it is you really want. And here's my favorite all-time question. So you're saying, just to be clear, Marley, you're saying start with the space, like look at this and say... Look inside the purse, right? And say, what do I need on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. What's for... No, just when you're doing it, when you're going in there to do that purse, you know... You want to look inside first and just say, what's working, what's not, and what do I really want? And why am I carrying the purse, right? Like, what's in it that I need or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's amazing. It just gives you clarity rather than going in there and diving in and touching all the stuff before you even know what the heck it is you want. So, makes a difference. And so, see it, map it, do it. And so... If it lets, I don't know, if I had my purse, I would dump it out and we'd go through it. Mine's really (laughs) small anyway. But, you know, if we dump it out, what's some of the stuff that falls out, right? Like the change, the wallet. I'd probably have migraine medicine that would fall out, some pens, (laughs) extra batteries for my phone. I'm trying to think what else would fall out that I might not need. It's probably all the other stuff that should be removed. Receipts. Well, let's, receipts. let's use that. Yeah, receipts is the biggie. So let's use that little fun first example. So if you dump it all out and you say, what's working, what's not, and what do I really want? Okay, and my favorite question for what do I really want is how do you want your purse to look, feel, and function? Everybody write that down. How do you want it to look, feel, and function? So if you're doing that purse, you might say, you know what? I want all the makeup together in one bag. I want the receipts together in one place because they're driving me crazy. And what the heck is all of my kids' toys doing in my purse? So it just gives you insight. I have have my son's wallet in my purse right now. Yeah. I forgot about that. You know? (laughs) So it always tells a story. But then once we start to touch the stuff, the do it step is so loaded that it gets its own fun little system called stacks which stands for sort, toss, assign, contain, keep it up, and simplify. And I'm going to share one thing on your program here that will absolutely transform people's lives when they go to organize this stuff. What happens is we start to touch it, and usually within 120 seconds, we're in the land of decision-making. 
Should I keep it or let it go? Where is it going to go? What's it going to go in? How did it get here? Oh, my goodness. How am I going to deal with this? And it's overwhelming and stressful, and we give up and we shove it back in the bag or we shove stuff back in the closet or we shove it back in the room. So stack is meant to be done one step at a time. When you dump out that purse and you're sorting, all you want to do first is sort and find out how many pens and pencils you've got in there, how many lipsticks that don't even work you've got in there, how many office supplies, how many receipts. Find out what the stuff is first by just sorting it. Same thing applies if you're doing a big job or medium-sized job. So let's like the pick kitchen counter. Let's pick like ten things, okay? So I'm looking. Okay. I just randomly googled like some of the things you'll find in a woman's purse. So mirror, awesome. mints, cell phone, makeup kit. Yep. Credit cards, loose change, chocolates. I don't yep. know if that would happen in Florida, but it's on the <laughs> list. Uh, creams, moisturizer, candy. lotion. What do you say, candy? Candy. Candy. There, yeah. Pepper yeah. spray, um, sunglasses, dental floss, morning after pill. Pretty interesting. Lighter, lipstick, nail file, receipts, pens, prescription meds, hand sanitizer, gum. Okay, so there's 20 items. Yep. Nail, paper of all kinds is always in the purse. So what we would do is, like, you know, going with those things, we would take any paper, so stick that in one pile. Yep, you're going to sort it into general categories really fast. So what would the general categories be if you were sorting a purse? Office supplies, makeup, receipts, other paper, money, fun stuff, toys. So keeping it really general, right, because you want it to go fast. Once you've got it sorted and you can see what you have, then you go through the toss. Then you're going to look in the makeup and you're going to go, oh, my goodness, I have five lipsticks in here. Three of them don't even work. I can get rid of those. (laughs) One's all the way used. (laughs) Yeah, people can't do the toss by just picking everything up separately. Once they see how much they have, the toss becomes a lot easier. So the beauty of stacks is you're only asking one question and making one decision. So for sort, you're just saying, what is it? For toss, you're saying, am I going to keep it or let it go? For assign, you're asking, where is it going to go? Contain, what is it going to go in? Keep it up, how can I maintain this? Simplify, how can I live with less? So once you look through the piles and you do the easy toss, because you're like, oh, my gosh, this doesn't even belong in my purse and you get rid of the garbage, then you're going to ask, where is it going to go? So here's the greatest tip I know of for the woman's purse. You either need to get an actual container like the Purse Perfector that goes down inside the bag. I've I've never heard. What's a Purse Perfector? I've never heard of it. The Purse Perfector. What is it? It's like a little freestanding thing that you can move from purse to purse. And it's designed by an organizer who traveled all the time, comes in bright colors. It's angled so that it fits inside the purse that you can still see everything. The Purse Perfector? absolutely brilliant, thepursperfector.com. Or my other simple and cheap solution is get brightly colored little sets of little mesh bags. My favorite, you can get a set of four at Barnes & Noble online just put in mesh bags you can get red or turquoise or black and just throw the stuff into its own container okay having a big bag with big open pockets is a nightmare same thing applies in the back seat of the car or the passenger seat of the car having very specific containers that hold the general categories I'm looking at the purse perfector, and I'm thinking that's why I've never seen it, because my purse is probably like the size of the inside part. (laughs) That's why I don't have one. Nothing fits Another thing is it zips apart, so there's, you know, you can have a bigger piece or just a smaller piece, and it's machine washable, made here in the U.S. But there are a bunch of little cubbies in there, so I can see why it would be handy. Yeah, and you can find everything easily. Yeah, it goes into multiple purses. Put it in your beach bag, put it in your briefcase. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a briefcase. (laughs) Makes sense to me. I usually carry my bag and my teeny tiny purse or wallet that that gets thrown in there. So, But if if not, have a specific container for the makeup, a specific place for the receipts. The receipts do not belong in the wallet. That clutters up the wallet more than anything else. So get a little cute mesh bag or an envelope or something that you can put those receipts in. 
And if your purse is, is teeny tiny, I guess you just have to pick what stays and what goes, right? Yeah, truly do. Then you get to make conscious choices about what's even going in. So, you know, that's where a sign of home is determined by how big that home is. <laughs> but if you have a little teeny tiny purse, I'm going to assume that you've mastered how to do that simply. Yeah, I have like the teeny tiny bottles of lotion and, you know. That's awesome. The tiny little packs of gum, all that fun stuff. Yeah, so a sign of home is just where in the purse is it going to go, contain what is it going to go in. So is it going to be in a specific pocket in the purse, or is it going to be in its own little container? And then keep it up. Here's my guidance is once a month for those really active areas. So the purse, the car, kitchen counter, the top of the washer and dryer, wherever things tend to get blocked. If you have kids and dogs like me and it's the car, it's usually got to be weekly. Yeah, it's probably be weekly. Exactly. Just like the laundry. That's how I think of it. <laughs> well, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. We're going to take a really quick break, Marla. Stand by, Sarah. Stand by, Kelly. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. Don't touch that dial because when we come back, we're going to get into a few more things, talk about our upcoming guests, tell you exactly where to get started, even if you don't have a purse. Back in a minute. You've heard this before. Interest rates are at all-time record lows. But if your interest rate is 4% or above, you owe it to yourself to call Silverton Mortgage Specialist. Silverton is a direct lender, and the best part about this is that the entire loan process is handled in-house. From application to close, we do it all in the same building, which means that our loans close fast and our clients know what's going on every step of the way. Our contact info is located on tampahometalk.com under radio show. What makes Silverton different? Products. We offer VA, FHA, USDA, and conventional loans pricing. Best rates with the lowest closing cost. Process everything in-house. It's handled right here and not outsourced to anyone that no one can reach. This way we can avoid surprises. Our people are simply the best, and we know you'll agree. What will closing Silverton Mortgage Specialist mean to you? A smooth process, real home loan value, and personal attention from real professionals. Silverton Mortgage Specialists are here to serve you. Visit TampaHomeTalk.com under Radio Show for all of our contact details. NMLS 109600 is an equal housing lender and Florida and Georgia residential mortgage licensee. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services. We're so glad that you're listening today that we're offering you a special deal. If you're purchasing a home, you can have $50 off your full home inspection. And if you're already a client of ours, we're offering 10% off of any other service that we offer. Just give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsboro Title. Hillsboro Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888 or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. This is the Tam Talk Radio Network. Welcome back. This is your host, Katrina Madewell, and you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for joining us this new year. You can catch us here on the same station every Thursday and Saturday at 5 p.m. In studio today, we are talking about organization, the clear and simple, let's get it done and keep it that way way. (laughs) So we have Marla D. She's an author of Organizing the Clear and Simple Way joining us today. We also have in studio Sarah Dovering, Simplicity Organizing Solutions. That's correct. By memory. And Kelly with Agboke, Kelly Agboke design management yes yeah. kelly Ogboke okay, design management thank got you got your last name right i'm just botching up the company <laughs> you know, gotta be something so 
We were talking about your system, just to kind of recap the first segment. You have the see it, map it, do it. Like, look where you're at, make a plan, then get it done. And here's where to start, you know, break it apart. And then the stacks is to help people figure out, like, where to start and how to get through that process, right? Yeah, so see it, map it, do it. Stacks will get you through it. That's the little... That's your rhyme. That's right. Yeah, and the... Stacks is all designed as a step-by-step process for getting through the stuff and only asking one question at a time and making one decision at a time. Makes sense to me. So yeah. I, our, our stu- one of the person that we have in studio today is Sarah Doring, and she's got a bachelor's degree in entrepreneurship and finance. Um, she's got experience as a nanny, an event planner, a personal assistant, so all these little fun things that probably brought you to where you are today. But, you know, I wanted to ask both of you guys, and and Kelly, I think we had a chance to share this with you on another show. Where did you guys start? And, you know, Sarah, you can go first. Marley, you go next. But how did you guys get your start in doing this? And what makes you want to be a professional organizer? And before we jump into that, Marley, real quick, share your stat, will you? Remember your stat about the organizational gene? Oh, so here's the deal. Only 10 percent of the human population on the planet Earth is born with the mystical, magical organizing gene. The other 90% of the human population don't know where to start, so what if you, to do, or how to keep it up. So if you're listening to Tampa Home Talk right now and you're one of those nine, don't feel bad. We're going to get you through it because only right. one of you has this gene. And you're probably right. organizing. So. <laughs> So, Sarah, how did you get your start, like, becoming an organizer? What And you have an interesting background, like you did nanny and some other stuff? Absolutely. Well, I guess I have that magical organizing gene um, because it's been something that I've enjoyed doing my whole life. And some people are just like, why would you want to do that? You know, that overwhelms me. And I get those similar questions like that. But um, I have been a nanny. I'm not anymore, but I was a nanny for a long time. And kind of my inability to sit still as I'd put the children to bed and, you know, finish up the chores for the night and things like that, I would move on to a pantry, um, maybe the playroom or something like that. And parents started to ask me, um, you know, as a young adult, would you do this if we paid you extra? So as a young adult, that kind of sparked my idea of I could make a living doing what I love. So that's how I got my start. So the kids would go to sleep for a couple of hours and you would like redo the pantry or the kitchen or whatever. And that's, you know, the pantry and a playroom, those are areas where I felt as though I wasn't taking liberties Um, because you can make suggestions pretty easily in a pantry, whether you're just looking through food and looking at expiration dates and things like that. So it really... (laughs) You're throwing away half the pantry because it's all expired. (laughs) You know, and... I wasn't throwing away without permission. I'd make sure it's okay, but making recommendations that maybe some of these things should go. Um, And families definitely seemed to appreciate what I was doing. And I just really believe in helping people live with less stress and more efficiently. And organization is where you have to start to maintain that in your household. And the problem is, you know, you can get so much stuff, and and we're going to talk about some of those positions that we see people in from a real estate perspective a a little later in the show. So you'll probably want to stick around for that if you have a lot of stuff, because we likely know where you're at, and that's some of the things we're going to talk about today. So Marla, how did you get your start in organizing, and what made you want to do the audio book and the e-book? So I'd want to say that I grew up the second eldest in a family of 10, with no organization and a lot of chaos. So the first half of my life was spent in just a whole lot of overwhelm. So I think it's made me really um, empathetic for people that deal with chaos. So I always just maintained the one area of my room the whole time I was growing up. But what happened for me was I was going through a class called The Artist Way. It's based on the book by Julia Cameron. It's a 12-week course. And in the middle of that 12 weeks, the group helped me see that the way I love to create in this world is send me into a room that's filled with chaos and clutter and ask me to organize it, and I am going to be so happy. And within about three weeks of that realization, I got a call from a woman asking if I could come help her organize her home office. And at the time, this was 15 years ago, so 
Nobody, it wasn't on television yet. Nobody knew it existed. I was the first one in the state of Utah to even start doing it professionally. But I loved it so much when I left for home at the end of our afternoon together. And she paid me. She handed me that check. She said, it's the best money I've ever spent. And I walked out of her home, and I felt like I was absolutely flying. And I knew I had found my thing. And by the end of the first year, it had grown into a full-time business just because the need was so great. And I loved doing it. It makes sense to me. I mean, well, I mean, just the stat alone that 90% don't have the organizational gene is enough. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, I'm sure that listening might be thinking, well, why should I hire a professional organizer and how much Uh, is that going to cost? And we've got a bunch of questions probably that'll be built into the rest of the show. But why would you hire a professional organizer? Well, so I'd love to say that what I found out my first year doing it was that people don't have the innate skill and it's very stressful for them. And so... You know, hiring somebody to come in there and make it clear and be your witness and be your guide and be your buddy is the biggest gift you can give yourself. So I have an organizer come into my home and my office every other month because, frankly, it's a hell of a lot more fun and productive to do it with another human being. So that's one of my top tips, actually, for the year is get an organizing buddy. You will actually save money, find money, and make money if you hire a professional organizer. And I bet Sarah would agree. We Absolutely. always so find money. So you find so random money people. in the house? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yes. yes. So give oh, me yes. an example. I think that we're missing and they sell stuff and they make money. But we like can't find the remote. Time. So, you know, that tells me. Like, I, like the, the kids have resorted to taking my smartwatch to be their remote for the TV because nobody can find it. <laughs> oh my it's bad. Gosh. Yes. Anyway, I love to throw myself under the bus, but that's just how it is. You know, with three kids and dogs, and it is what it is. Crazy. So, so where, Sarah, I have it. Where do you guys find money and stuff? Like, I mean, sometimes when doing a closet, whether it falls out of pants or, um, Part of our job is also helping people organize your purses, and yeah. you know that's what's in people's closets. So there is money everywhere. I'm trying to think of the weirdest place that I have found money before. I mean, something as simple as, you know, um, by the dog's food bowl or something. It's like I don't know how the dog yeah. didn't consume it or something like that. But um, I mean, that even kind of taps on a different point of what Marla and I do is that the integrity of our work is huge, yeah. and um, We're different from a cleaning service in the fact that we are internally cleaning out your home and your life and your schedules. So it really takes... um, Which I thought was interesting, by the way, when I read that on your bio, Mm -hmm. about about organizing your schedule. Oh, yeah. So I help individuals with scheduling as well. And I find that that helps people not feel quite as overwhelmed. I mean, the home organization does the same exact thing, but it's a great place to start that maybe is, you know, something they're feeling motivated to do, and that's what I tell individuals is wherever you are feeling motivated, that is where we are going to start. Um, So, yeah, so schedules seem to be something that's pretty popular to get that organized first and then work internally in the home. So there's something that I wanted to talk about because I've seen this a lot with different homes, and, you know, there's been a few people on our team over the years where, they lose their parents. I just had the same conversation with a client. She, and it was, um, you know, I had worked with her a lot, so I knew the parent. She had already introduced me. And then her mom just passed. And so not only did she have to go make, you know, all the final arrangements and stuff, but there's mm-hmm. all this stuff that sometimes just, you know, in a frenzy or if they're out of state might just get brought back. Mm-hmm. to your home because you don't know what to do with it and you have to make a decision quick, right? Do you guys see that? Right. Absolutely. All the time. So tell me about that. So let's use that for an example, okay? Someone has just lost um, their mother or both maybe, you know, they were the final one out of both of the parents. Mm -hmm. And so now they brought all this stuff back and now they have stuff everywhere. And it's not really like a hoarder's house, but there's stuff everywhere. Like Mm -hmm. there, you can't, you know, a home stager would tell you we're selling floor and wall space and you don't see a lot of that Mm -hmm. when you go into the home and they, you know, it's getting hard to find their stuff now. Where does somebody like that start? Like they're thinking, oh no, I'll do it i'll do it i'll do it but then do it never happens mm. what do you guys do when you come in like where do you start because it's not something you do on your own right you're doing that with the homeowner mm-hmm. absolutely anything we do we're doing 
alongside the client. Um, the For me, at least, I don't know how Marla's system exactly works um, in comparison to mine, but I help people sort, and I can kind of do that independently to almost give them an inventory of how many things they have of each category. And then from that point, we purge. And some individuals would prefer to use the word donate, and I completely understand. Purge is kind of a... Um, typical organizational yeah. term that sometimes is intimidating to certain individuals. Well, but what it, when you were talking, Marla was talking about her see it, map it, do it. So the uh-huh. see it was, mm-hmm. would be the sorting that you were talking about. And so I could imagine when somebody comes back, it's a lot easier for them to go through it with you. Absolutely. So it kind of allows them to step back for a second, express to me in a consultation what their goals are, what their needs are. And once I'm able mm-hmm. to figure out what a client needs, I'm able to do this sorting process almost for them so that when they come back, they're feeling motivated, they're feeling empowered to move forward and make these decisions. Do you find that people that are a bit more hesitant to start that process are a little more inclined to jump in and be excited to get going and help you with it after you've done the sorting? I would say after our first appointment, it is amazing the transformation in a client. The next time I come back, it's um, they're feeling motivated, they're excited, they're making more of these purging decisions decisions independently i'm not having to ask so um, you're, the questions when you say the next time you're not talking about from a consultation the first time you're talking about you completely organized whatever and you're coming back reoccurring a reoccurring okay. client or some projects um based on an individual's schedule cannot be completed at one time um, okay. garages typically oh, yeah. take quite a few sessions and that and it all depends. might be a week it's bad <laughs> It's well, bad. we don't have basements in we Florida, don't. so... The garage is the catch-all. It is. It's the catch-all. <laughs> My husband's so going to laugh at the show when he hears it, I swear. <laughs> so, it, you know, where, where does someone start? Like, can you give me an idea what something like that might cost? And I know it depends on your time, so you can discuss whatever you want as far as, like, hourly or whatever, or just give a range and if you were to come organize the kitchen, like all the pans won't fit and there's too many cups, or if you were to um, organize the garage or whatever project you'd like to use for an example. All right. Well, I don't want to talk too much. So Marla, if you want to chime in, that's fine as well. Um, for me, it really depends. I do an hourly rate. It's $45 for indoor projects and $60 for garages per hour. And um, I do a price estimate within a consultation for individuals so that so they... So you kind of see what's there so you can figure it out. Absolutely, because okay. block pricing, at least um, from my point of view, it just is not the most efficient way to do pricing with organizing based on people's size of their space and based on their clutter. Really, the amount of time is going to vary. I would say most projects take me about 8 to 10 hours, but it can be much less and it can be much more. Gotcha. And so is that the same for you, Marla? So very similar. I really agree with with Sarah's approach. And our most popular packages are our 10-hour packages for that gotcha. very reason. It usually takes 8 to 10 hours to really get a good project done. And, so it's, um, but the other thing I like people to hear is that we can usually get three times as much done in an hour as a person trying to do it by themselves. That's because interesting. professionals at this, and we go fast. That makes I mean, sense. When we sort, it's not our stuff. And we're constantly looking at better ways to assign and contain, and we know how to create, keep it up systems for people. So, I mean, this is our profession. And it, if you think about somebody who's never done a sport before versus somebody who's done it for you know, 20 years, there's a world of difference. And, and it, really like it makes sense, you know, to relate it to my world. And we work with a lot of relocation clients. So, mm-hmm. you know, buyers that are relocating from another area. And then we work side by side with clients that have picked a list or whatever. And we're going to take them out to see a group of properties. I can get to twice. I can myself personally by myself can get through twice as many properties in yeah. half the time than I could with a client. And I, I'm videoing every little thing. They're going to see everything that they would see yeah. as if they were, standing right next to me. So I, I can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Katrina, can I say one thing back to your other question because that was so valuable when you talked about losing the parents? Please chime in because that's a big one, I think, for a lot of people. It's, it's huge and it's growing. So um, as With the boomer generation, called, right? Because they're the biggest yeah. ones. So. Yeah. So as Sarah mentioned, the see it, map it, that's the assessment 
consultation, that is absolutely critical in that situation. And those people need to be able to tell their story of what is going on. And by the time you get through that, they have a lot of clarity, and so do you, and you know where to start. And we still break it into pieces. You know, we try and get all the parent staff together in one area, even if it means getting a storage unit for a while. The worst thing that person wants to do is have that stuff taking up all of their active home space and constantly stressing them out. So, you know, deciding where it's going to go and how they're going to go through it. And they're better off going through it slowly than to dive in and try and get it all done at once. And I personally am so passionate about that because I lost both my parents within a year of each other. And we had gone through all the downsizing and through all of the stuff. So when they passed away, all of their papers were in order, and and the 10 kids were able to get together and really, really celebrate and grieve and do all that together as a family because we didn't have all the stuff. Right. The one one layer we still had was my mother's 40 banker's boxes filled with her precious papers, photos, and memorabilia. So paper is like the biggest area of clutter in today's world and in American homes. If we get to that, to talk about the paper, is taking over the homes. It's in the kitchen, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the cars, everywhere. I tell you, once you find a little system just to fix paper with things like even receipts, where somebody yeah. like me keeps every receipt because I itemize stuff at the end of the year, all that stuff goes in my little blue envelope and it gets shipped off to shoebox every month. And if yep. I miss a receipt, it just goes in the bin and it's gone next month. Yep. So it's paper. Yeah, it's a big one. So what do you do with the people that I know you're, it was simple for your mom because you had already been there to organize or you guys have went through it so you could find everything. But what happens, and I know I've heard these horror stories when a parent has passed and they don't even know if they have life insurance or anything like they that. They don't know where anything. And they can't find anything. And, you know, you get some of the boomer generation and not to say that their house is a hoarder's house because I think there's a big difference, but it's darn close with regard to the amount of clutter. Is there a word for that? Like, other than clutter, like a home that's extremely cluttered, but it's not really like a hoarder's house? Is there a word for that or no? Extremely disorganized. Okay. Right. Right. And typically they might still be a hoarder, but not chronic level, you know. So they just got a lot of stuff. There's two things I would say on that. First of all, you know, I'm just committed to empowering and teaching families a clear and simple way to get their vital documents in place now. So um, it starts with the kids themselves. If the kids would get their vital documents in order and then approach their parents, most people don't do it because they still don't know where to start or how to get it done. You know, if you do nothing else with a professional organizer, let them help you get your financial documents organized. It's just so worth it. And we Um, had an attorney on a while back that was talking about probate. um, And and you have to have those originals. It's an imperative part of the process. Yes, you really do. And so if, if you're alive and listening to this program and you don't know where that stuff is for your parents, this is the time to approach them. So I just had a friend over the weekend was in a car accident, um, was in a coma, and they're taking him off life support, and he was just getting ready to retire. I mean, it happens all the time. So How does somebody approach own? a parent about that topic? That's a hard one. They actually can, though, if they go to them in the spirit of helpfulness and just say, I would like to help you get your vital documents done. You know, let's let's start. And, and I have this free little guide that I'm always willing to give anybody if they email me on stepping them through that process because it's really important. Um, but if they're already passed on, the best thing I can say is break it into stages. Don't try and take it all on at once. It's too overwhelming, and then they don't do anything, and then 10 years go by, and all the stuff is still there. Yeah, definitely. So get, help, get help and break it into stage. And if you don't have it done, a good place to start might be just to get it done and then have your attorney keep an original copy because a lot of attorneys do that. 
Exactly. And, Katrina, that's also why I read that or wrote that little book that I told you about, The Art of Letting Go, that's free for everyone on my website, Art Stands for Acceptance, Release, and Trust. We're working with a lot of elderly people, and I speak to a lot of elderly people in libraries and in the centers. And what I found is I put that little book in their hands, and it just kind of opens them up, and it gets them willing to start dealing with this stuff. They need a lot of support, and it is a specialty now that some organizers are getting trained in and doing is just working with the seniors on getting rid of the stuff and down. Makes sense. We're going to take a really quick break here on Tampa Home Talk. We are going to post that ebook on our website at tampahometalk.com. We're also going to put um, some information and some the uh, contact information for our guest at tampahometalk.com, Facebook, Twitter, and across the web. Just search for us at Tampa Home Talk, and we'll pop right up. We'll be back in a minute. We're going to talk about uh, the consultation process. Where do you start? Is there a charge? And um, where would be a good little test ride? Back in a minute. You've heard this before. Interest rates are at all-time record lows. But if your interest rate is 4% or above, you owe it to yourself to call Silverton Mortgage Specialist. Silverton is a direct lender, and the best part about this is that the entire loan process is handled in-house. From application to close, we do it all in the same building, which means that our loans close fast and our clients know what's going on every step of the way. Our contact info is located on tampahometalk.com under radio show. What makes Silverton different? Products. We offer VA, FHA, USDA, and conventional loans pricing. Best rates with the lowest closing cost. Process everything in-house. It's handled right here and not outsourced to anyone that no one can reach. This way we can avoid surprises. Our people are simply the best, and we know you'll agree. What will closing Silverton Mortgage Specialist mean to you? A smooth process, real home loan value, and personal attention from real professionals. Silverton Mortgage Specialists are here to serve you. Visit TampaHomeTalk.com under Radio Show for all of our contact details. NMLS 109600 is an equal housing lender and Florida and Georgia residential mortgage licensee. Hi, this is Melissa Rogers, owner of SEC Inspection Services. We're so glad that you're listening today that we're offering you a special deal. If you're purchasing a home, you can have $50 off your full home inspection. And if you're already a client of ours, we're offering 10% off of any other service that we offer. Just give us a call at 727-786-4663 or visit us on the web at secinspection.com. Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsborough Title. Hillsborough Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888 or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell, and I've got some amazing guests in the studio today talking all about organization. Um, Sarah Doring, Marla D., and also Kelly Agboke, Design Management. And so we have been talking all about like what happens when you acquire extra stuff. How do you do stuff? Where do you start? So let's say you know someone's listening to the program right now and they say, that sounds really good. I think I'd like to start with Um, my desk or my office I just don't know where to put stuff or my pantry or this is the main area that we spend the most amount of time the living room wherever that is outdoor space and they just want to begin and so and some of these people you know might be the boomer generation which I've noticed and I'm sure you guys have too so feel free to chime in they hold on to a lot of stuff anybody that came out of that I forget what the error or the age frame is where they did without a lot of stuff they tend to hold on to a lot more stuff yeah, absolutely. Um, and I never want a client to feel bad about holding on or wanting to preserve memories and things like that. So what I will do is offer them alternative solutions to preserving memories and kind of you know picking bits and pieces of their loved ones' belongings and things like that and commemorating in ways where you're using it as 
wall art in your home, whether mm-hmm. it's crocheted things or whether it's diplomas, you know, of your relatives, you know, um, anything like that, you can preserve it in a way that you see it on a daily basis. And they like that idea. It's like, oh, well, if I choose one or two things and we're able to frame them and hang them, I get to see that every day instead of it sitting in a box. What's the most common area would you say you get called in to work on or organize or fix? What's what's the number one space in someone's home? I would say home offices okay. and garages. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So when you guys go out there, and we'll just use the garage because mine looks worse than my office. So I'll just throw myself <laughs> right under the bus and just I'll, we'll use me as an example. If you were to come to my home and look at my garage, there's this stuff in there. And some of it I want to get rid of. And the kids are like, no, don't get rid of that. And I'm like, but it's just taking up space. And I just want to get rid of everything. But if you come there and you start, is, is there a charge for the consultation? Are you just coming to assess what's there and give somebody an idea of how much that's going to cost? Like, give me an idea what that consultation looks like. What does it, what does it feel like? Like, what can I expect? Um, Well, for me, I offer a 30-minute free consultation where I meet with a new client and assess their needs and their goals and evaluate their space, the size of the space, the amount of clutter. And we kind of talk about a price range. We talk about a time frame. And we hopefully make and establish those goals to move forward and set up a time to sort purge and organize in a way that's sustainable for them that's very important to me because if i organize everything the way i organize my home for someone with a different skill set or you know um they think differently that is not going to work for them and as soon as i leave they're going to feel overwhelmed again so i have not done my job properly until i create organizing solutions that are sustainable for a family so when you do that with somebody side by side, is that or a matter of here's what I would like to do, here's where I think might work for your lifestyle to put this or find it? Is that what it's like so that when you leave, everybody still knows where their stuff is? Um, it looks very differently for each space, um, the kind of needs that people have. But in a consultation, you know, learning people's preferences of how they like to work or when they like to work, um, what kind of foods they buy the most, um, what they, what they use the most, because what they use the most needs to be the most accessible and what they do not can go on a higher shelf or could maybe even go in the attic if it's stored properly. Um, so there are many different solutions to really making that customizable to them. So have you guys had uh, any people that you've went and worked with that are your couponers that tend to accumulate stuff and then they realize they've got stuff expired? Like, do you have you dealt with that? Um, for me, it's more the pantry Is and it? the expiration dates, but coupons as well because they're whenever doing a home office, we work with the file systems. No, but the people that, that go oh. buy all the extra stuff and then it's there. Like, have you got calls for that yet or no? Personally, I have not... Um, I worked with someone who's a professional couponer at this point. I am open to doing so. Um, Marla, have you? Have you encountered that? Anybody from your team? Oh, yeah. Oh, heavens, yeah. (laughs) What do you see? Like, is there expired stuff, or is it everywhere? Is it sort of organized? You know, at this point in time, just because I've been doing it for so many years, I think I've probably seen every scenario that's out there. I would say the most common ones that I see are you get people who constantly buy stuff because that's their emotional therapy. Mm -hmm. That's very real Mm -hmm. in today's world. We like to go out and get the high of buying, and then we take it home, and the high is over. They dump it down. I've worked with people where the, the shopping bags are still filled. And those bags now take up an entire room, and they're still shopping. Mm-hmm. So, and the coupon people right alongside that. And that's, so, I mean, that's, is that, would you consider yeah. that a hoarder, or is that borderline, yeah. or? Yes, I would consider that, you know, a chronic disorganization case where there's something mental going on. So either there's um, an emotional issue or an addiction going on, but we do see that. But I think what we see the most is just a lot of chaos in the homes, especially with the paper in the bedrooms or the big areas like you described with the garage, that become the dumping ground because people are so busy these days. They don't, they're not setting aside the time to go through the stuff. And so it's coming in way faster than it's going out. That so makes one sense. of the challenges I give, love giving people at the beginning of the year is the 30-day challenge. Go for 30 days 
and don't bring or buy anything new except for the essentials. This comes from Elaine St. James' book, Simplifying, and you will learn more about what you already have, your uh, relationship and patterns with shopping and with the stuff. You'll be excited and empowered because you'll realize there's all these things you would have spent money on that you don't even need because you don't think about it three days later. It's a really cool challenge. I tell you, and we um, host Financial Peace University in, in our office. I know Kelly's been through ah, it, yeah. her and her husband. Um, that's a good way, too, for people that even if they have buying cycles, it'll make them very yeah. conscious of their decisions. Mm-hmm. It'll teach them how to save money and really just kind of, I think it rearranges your whole brain as far as your thought process it, with uh, money. Yeah, we, we've we actually, in January, we decided to reorganize our budget and whatever was not working in 2014, we kind of stepped back and remapped it and kind of taken a new approach. But it does, it really changes how you, it changes how you buy, it changes, you know, like what we're, what we're looking forward so to buying and planning right. and where we're going to store it. And um, Katrina yeah. helped us find a new home and we closed last week. And so we're getting ready to wow. do our demo and everything like that. So I need to come up with a plan for <laughs> how we're going to get, you know, what we have into our new place and, And how we're going to organize that and make it, you know, make the most use out of the space. I mean, it's not a very big home, but it's as much as it's what we need. And, you know, I've kind of taken a plan and made a plan, you know, being an interior designer, I can, you know, look at and make that, that map of spaces and trying to kind of remap how it, how it works so we can get the most out of that space. Which is amazing. Cause you know, you walk through Ikea and you see those four or 500 square foot places and that's you. I love yeah. that. That's why I people love like you that, that design that. Like I, I yeah. want, and it's so funny. My husband wants this big house and I'm like, I'm so good with a little shoe box because I can rework that space so efficiently that, you know, we don't need all that space. We don't have to cool all that space. We don't have to maintain all that space. And I mean, it, and I get that from clients too that say, I, I need more space. I need more space. And it's like, actually, let's just no. look at what you have. You could use it so much differently from like a architectural point of view, but also from an organization solution. And so that's where, mm-hmm. you know, Sarah's services come in really handy. And, you know, whether somebody's renovating or maybe they don't even need to do an addition. They they hire me to do an addition, but maybe we don't need to because Sarah comes in. Yeah. <laughs> and she right. determines actually we don't need that, that much more nice. space. I, I tell you, I love people that really it just are. Money. They're genuine. They give from the heart, mm-hmm. even if that means you stepping out of the way and introducing them to somebody else that is better suited for whatever they have going on because sometimes people just can't see it you know and then you consult with them and you get it and we're that way too Mm -hmm. this is probably why we're a great match so any closing thoughts sarah um you know thank you so much for having me and i just want people to know that if they're looking to simplify the name of my company is um simplicity organizing solutions so i'm all about helping people live more efficiently with less stress And we're going to post um, both of our, all of our guests, I should say, photo cards on our website, our Facebook page. A lot of people like to follow at Tampa Home Talk. Maybe you can even post some before and after pictures, Marla and Sarah. That'd be great. And I know Kelly, God, you have some amazing stuff with your before and after. Yes, she does. Um, But we would be happy to share those things and give you an idea. And then even if you don't mind posting like a price associated with that project time, because I think people can really relate to visual things that they can see. Absolutely. So thank you so much. you guys in studio marla by phone for joining thank i should you. say thank girls you. for all ladies today <laughs> for joining us for tampa home talk what a great show on organization i can hardly bring i can hardly wait to bring you the remaining shows in the future and this one will be available via a podcast as are all of our shows so just check out tampahometalk.com facebook and twitter across the web at tampa home talk we happy to call you text you tweet you back for this week we're out